Today, I will show you how to tweer flash your top greener smart Wi Fi powerful plug with energy monitoring. I bought this in March 31st, 2021, and I was able to flash it. So, hopefully, you're able to get some of these and flash them yourself. A lot of the two year devices cannot be flashed at the moment, but if you're lucky, you can get them with older firmware that can be flash. How to flash them? Well, I follow this the hookup channel from YouTube. I will share you the link below. All you have to do is get yourself a Raspberry Pi Model 3, the one that has Wi-Fi built in, a Cat5 cable. Use a Cat5 cable to connect directly from your network to the Raspberry Pi 3. Install whatever latest Raspbian Lite version. You do not need the desktop version. Use the simplest version that you can find. Burn it onto your SD card, micro SD card. Don't forget, once you're done with the burning, open that micro SD card and add in a file. Name it SSH. Remove any extension behind it, such as TXT. Remove everything behind it. Just SSH. Next, turn on your Raspberry Pi with the Ethernet cable connected to your network. Download a software called PuTTY if you haven't already. Find the IP address of your Raspberry Pi in your network. I use this software called Advanced IP Scanner. And this is my Raspberry Pi on the local area network, on my home network. With your IP address of the Raspberry Pi 3, go ahead and open up PuTTY. 192.168.196. Login is Pi. The default password is Raspberry. Once you're connected to the Raspberry via PuTTY, Go ahead and run these commands. First, you need to expand the file system. Then you need to update, upgrade, install some of these as well. You do not need to run number seven because step number seven no longer applies, no longer work. For step number seven, Go ahead and go to this website, the GitHub. When you're there, go and download it as a zip file. Extract it. Extract all the zip files. Go ahead and open your FTP to the Raspberry Pi 3. This is what it will look like, the host. This is SFTP, by the way. The host is the same IP address as before. User is Pi, password is Raspberry. Hit Connect. When you log in for the first time, this is what you'll see. Create a directory called Tuya-Convert. Finally, upload everything in your zip file to the Tuya Convert folder that you created it. Some of the SH files needs to be converted from readable to executable. So right click on the SH files, go down to file permission and change it to execute. Or you can put in the number 755 and hit OK. Change for the other SH file as well. Go into the scripts change all of these sh and py files as well go into smart config folder and go ahead and change this to 755 again so step 7 was kind of hairy because the github no longer lets you log in anonymously anymore it has to be a token that's why 
go ahead and resume step two of section five. When you're done, go ahead and run this command. Remember, if it shows an error, then that means you didn't set the file permission properly. So go back into FTP and do it. As you can see, I did it already, and this is what you'll get. But we can do it one more time. When I plug my top greener smart plug in, there's no light whatsoever. For whatever reason, it's already looking for the um, to be sync or something like that. So if it's already in sync mode, press return, press enter on your putty. If it's not in sync mode, then go ahead and press and hold down the power button to get it into sync mode and it will start blinking green very fast. All right, as you can see, it's already uh, talking to the uh, smart plug. It will ask you, what do you want to do? I'm going to flash it with test motor. Number two. Are you sure you want to flash? Yes. Okay, we are done with test motor. Since we're all done, I'm gonna hit no. And there we go. Now you can shut down your Raspberry Pi because we don't longer need it. Let's go ahead and make the backup of the Raspberry Pi 3 micro SD card now. Because in the future, who knows if I need it to flash more devices, then I could always reuse this micro SD card again. Make sure you use the drive of the micro SD card when you pop it in. Give it a name. Go ahead and click on read so that it will start reading the micro SD card and create the image file. This takes at least 10 minutes, so go ahead and grab yourself an ice cream or a cup of coffee. When you're done flashing using PuTTY, your smart plug should be flashing green. It's waiting for connection. Open your phone up and look for Wi-Fi hotspots or access points, sorry. You should be able to see something like test moda, something that starts with test moda. Go ahead and connect to it. After you're done connecting, open your web browser, any browser. I use Firefox myself. Open the browser on your smartphone and connect to 192.168.4.1. You're going to give it your home Wi-Fi SSD so that it can connect to your home Wi-Fi network. After you give it your home Wi-Fi network, it will try to connect from the test motor smart plug to your Wi-Fi home network. Go ahead and open your advanced IP scanner again to try to find what that IP address is. For me, my smart plug is 192.168.1.97. Now open up your web browser and go to that address. This is the basic interface. Go into the configure other menu. Configure other. I have the top greener. So my template will be something like this. You can change the web admin password if you like. After you change the template, the 
admin password. Don't forget to enable MQTT so you, that you can control it via Home Assistant. The device name can be whatever you want. The friendly name can be whatever you want as well. Emulation, none. Hit save. The changes take effect immediately, so log in back in again. If all is done correctly, when you restart, you will see this. This is the uh, smart plug with energy monitor, so you're going to see voltage, current, and power consumption. Right now it's on and it's connected to an LED light, so that's why it's consuming some power. If you toggle it off, then all of these should go down to zero. And it does. Now remember, the IP address of the smart plug was assigned by your router. You do not want this to be automatic. You want the IP address to be static. To set up a static IP address, go into your router. Mine is a Netgear. So this is what you would do if you have a Netgear as well. Log into Netgear, click on Advance, click on Setup, LAN Setup, go down all the way to the bottom, click on Add, find your smart plug, which is here. Mine is a 97 and it starts with Test Moda. I'm going to give it an IP address that I know that is not in use. It's going to be 221 in my network. The name will be uh, Top Greener 2. There's too many um, smart plug in the house. Mine will be the number 2 because number 1 is already taken. Click on Add up at the top. You should see your entry down at the bottom and click on apply. To get your smart plug working with Home Assistant, go ahead and lock back into the smart plug using the web browser. Click on configuration. Click on configure MQTT. Your host will be your host of the MQTT. Most likely this is your home assistant server. So mine is 192.168.229. Yours will be definitely be different. The client will be top two or whatever you want to name it this will appear in your home assistant the user will be your MQTT user that you created in home assistant the topic will be top two you can leave this blank Click on save when you're done. Now click on your configuration YAML file that's in your home assistant. I'm going to use notepad. You can use whatever you like. You can see that I created a bunch of settings for my top greener one already. So I'm just going to go ahead and copy everything and paste it as top two for my top greener model two the name will be moisture Before we were monitoring the refrigerator, but now we're going to monitor the uh, dehumidifier. 
asterisk, name it the humidifier. So wherever I see top 1, I just rename it to top 2. Remember, top 2 is what we created in the configuration of the smart plug. Now I'm going to go to this website, YAML Lint, to verify that my YAML file is correct. And it is correct. So, perfect. I'm going to hit the Save button. Because changes were made to the configuration file, go ahead and restart the core. HA space core space restart. Once your HA fully restarted, go to the left hand side, go down to developers tools, start typing in the name that we change. So before it was fridge, but now it's the humidifier. You don't have to type out the whole thing, just some of it. And here you can see that it is working. Right now, the power consumption is 14. If the dehumidifier is turned off because it has so much water in the bucket already, then it will automatically shut down and alert me that I need to drain the bucket. So it's pretty slick for a energy monitoring. So now that you know how much the dehumidifier is drawing power, Next, you can set up the automation so that if the dehumidifier is turned off because the water bucket is full, then it will send you a text message over to your phone and let you know it's time to drain the bucket. I hope that this instruction video guide helps you from flashing your smart plug to something local, independent of Tuya server, to setting up the MQTT. And then next, you can set up the automation to let you know how much power the smart plug is consuming and you can act accordingly from there. Let me know if you have any questions in the comment section. Thanks for watching.